Hi, Mike Koster here to demonstrate the electronically cranked coil tester or ECCT. Here we have an ECCT with Model T coil already installed, powered, and ready to go. We'll also be demonstrating the optional advanced feature software, which is shown in the upper display here. The advanced features control panel displays the same information as displayed on the front panel of the ECCT LED display, but with the added benefit of seeing the numerical values of the parameters tested along with the graphical display of their test result. Now testing a Model T coil involves three steps. The capacitor test which tests for value and leakage to make sure it's good before moving on to the coil dwell time to fire test. In this test each coil is set up to fire after the same time once it's commanded to to spark. And finally once the coils are set up, we run the multi-spark fire consistency test to see how consistently the, the coils will fire. So our first test is going to be the capacitor test. And we're, we can run that test one of two ways, either pressing the test button on the GUI or pressing the test button on the front panel of the ECCT. We'll be using the GUI to, to run this test, but first we have to open the points by pressing down on the vibrator spring so that the points are open exposing the capacitor to the test. We'll press down on the vibrator spring, press the test button, and then the results are displayed. We see here on the ECCT front panel that its value is read on the bottom scale of 0.47 microfarads and the result is shown as excellent which means that the leakage is also very low. You can see the same information up here on the GUI in addition to the value of 0.512 microfarads, the leakage of 92 uh, megohms is uh, shown also. Now, it's not sure what all that means. There's an information status box which says in written language what the results of the test are. In this case, the capacitor test passed with very low leakage and the results were excellent. Now with the capacitor established to be good, we move on to the coil dwell time test and we press the test button here or alternately on the front panel. Uh, we'll notice that as I selected the test here, it could have also been selected down here on the front panel and the, the indicator light is also showing coil test. So we'll run the test and we see that in the coil results window, which is now highlighted, the nominal firing time is zero and this coil fired very late indicating a retarded spark. Um, there's additional information which tells you the time it fired and the current in which it, the coil was running at when it did fire. Both are on the high side and that's uh, also the fact that it fired late. You can see the same indication down here on the LED display where it's showing three degrees of timing error and what we want to do now is move that back to the center, the nominal position, and that's done by following the arrow either on the front panel or here is a better view of it, the front panel uh, red arrow to decrease the vibrator spring tension is what we want to do to move it back here. That of course is done by prying up on the rear of the coil vibrator spring. So we'll do that now with our coil adjusting tool. And then we'll retest it for result. We want to go a little bit more. Didn't get it quite enough. Now in this case I overshot and it went down to being firing early. And you can see that again the corresponding LED on the front panel display corresponds with the coils up test results on the GUI. So in this case, we want to move it back to the right by following the red arrow, increasing the vibrator spring tension. And that is done by giving a slight tap down here. Gentle tap. Small adjustments have big effect on coil performance, as you can see. So it's an iterative process that we have to uh, go back and forth till we get it centered. And once we think we got it right, we can either test the, the firing consistency repeated like that, or a better test is to run the multi-spark firing consistency test, which runs 100 sparks at the simulated engine speed of 2,000 RPM. And in this case, we see that it has excellent 
firing consistency where we have 91% of the 100 sparks fired at zero timing error, about uh, 9 or 8 fired at plus 1 and a little bit outside. So what's considered excellent is 85% or better firings at zero timing error. Good is considered plus or minus 1. And if there's any appreciable number outside that, it's considered poor. You can see the same result on the front panel of the ECCT with the two LEDs lit, although it does not show what the distribution is. For that, we have to rely on the test result LEDs. In this case, the excellent LED is indicated. So we know that greater than 85% of the firings were at zero. Should it have been evenly distributed 50-50 within zero and plus one, it would have been a good result. And if there was an appreciable number outside the plus or minus one degree, the poor LED would have been lit. So that's what it takes to test a Model T coil with the ECCT using the dwell time to fire method. I hope you found this video interesting and thanks for watching.